Servus Männer, it's Red Pill Germany again. Today I want to share a story from my private life. Recently a very good old friend um, called me again after we hadn't seen each other or heard from each other in a long while. And um, I will be making a second video about that. And the second video <laughs> will um, then finally deal with the fact why he um, called me after such a long time. But I think if you, if you are a guy and you know how these things work, you can probably imagine why an old friend who, um, you know, we, we didn't have a falling out or anything, we get along really well, you know, and why such a guy would call me again after radio silence for so long. I think you can already imagine why that is. But this is not what today's video is about. Well, I will find out actually. Um, maybe it is, and that's what I'm a bit scared of. Because um, we will meet in October again, and then he will tell me all about what happened in the meantime. But um, it was actually two years ago when he had um, a question, a question for me, or he wanted to talk things over with me. Um, it was about his career. You must know, this guy um, is married, has two kids, um, or let's just give it away, he was married. A <laughs> big shocker, I think you could already tell from the way I was uh, phrasing this. But um, so he was married um, with two kids, um, kind of high school, well, not really high school, but maybe undergrad sweetheart, and um, he wasn't happy at his job. So in today's video, I want to um, tell you um, what his complaints were about his um, industry job, and uh, in the second part, I will tell you what my advice to him was and why that was. And I hope that my advice wasn't really you know, responsible or in part at least responsible for um, yeah, sabotaging his marriage or something like that. I will find out in October when I um, go drinking with him again. So um, the thing is, he is a good old friend from university, also a physicist. Um, he studied with me and um, he, just like me, after finishing, um, he wanted to go into the industry because he thought that Academia is not really for him. Well, he he was more contemplating um, to a higher degree staying in academia as me. I was very clear, no, I'm not going to do that. That is nonsense. I have to get out of here. I have to go to the industry. But he was kind of like, I could do both, but industry is maybe better. And that's what he did then. So he went to a very good um, company. And I have to tell you, he had to move. To get there, he moved into an area um, where a different tribe is living. Yeah, so he was—he is a German, but he's from a different tribe than that, than that that inhabits that area. Okay, so different culture, yeah? different dialect, mm, might be difficult. More about that later. So, but the company—you have to know that for many physicists, it's a—it's not a big problem to get hired, but they most of them want a job that um, has at least something to do with physics, yeah, with natural sciences. They don't want to just be hired as basically an accountant who can use MS Office, still make a good wage, but um, they're not using 95% of their knowledge and their skill. They want a job that has something to do with engineering, with physics, with maybe even programming, um, but if it's just accounting or just, just a managerial position that... that just pushing paper, they're most of the time not satisfied with that. But he was lucky. Yeah, He's a great coder, he's a great experimentalist, and he's also good in uh, in theory, in theoretical physics. So this is why I respect him a lot as a physicist, and um, this is why he contemplated also staying in academia, because if anybody has what it takes, it's that guy. So he was really lucky at that company, I would say on paper, because the job he had was as close to uh, academic university physics research as you could imagine in the free market, in the industry. 
So that was great. Um, he liked that about his job. And what he didn't like, though, is that um, he, for some days or some weeks, didn't really know what to do. Um, he wasn't really micromanaged there, and he didn't really have someone, like a mentor, who tells him how things are done around here and stuff. And, you know, some people like that, some people don't like it. Um, it is actually something that, that, that a lot of newbies at a job will face. But um, he didn't really like it. Um, he, he, he would have liked someone to be there to tell him how the game is played, how the culture is at this company. But later on, I would say, I mean, I didn't tell it, I mean, I didn't say it back then because that was too early. But, but normally, um, the, you're not given assignments when you are more experienced. The assignments find you. And that is what I should have told him maybe. But, you know, it's not just about that. It was... There were many, many reasons. So, about the job. He was happy about the job on paper, but he wasn't happy about the, the way he was managed there. Okay, that's that part. Then I already mentioned that he's from a different tribe, from a different culture. And um, he followed um, oh, his um, professor where he got his PhD, he followed him for a bit, so for like a certain time, which is very usual, it's not unusual, you know, that after defending your PhD, you stay there for half a year, a year, and you finish pro projects, and you write two or three more papers, and then you look for a new job, and also, actually, you can apply for a job while you're still employed at the university. In this way, you're useful to your boss, because you wrap up loose ends, and you'd maybe teach the next guy that takes over, and you are gainfully employed while you can look for a job, while you can write applications and go to job interviews. So it's a win-win situation. So this is very usual, okay? And um, he went then with this professor to also a different area of Germany where he also was foreign, also different tribe. Uh, we have three German tribes involved now. But at that area, in that area, he was actually welcomed with his family, right? Um, he was very well integrated. His kids were you know, active in clubs, local clubs. There were festivities, cultural customs and events where the whole family was integrated. And these people who lived there, they didn't make a difference between the people who lived there forever for generations and these newcomers from a different tribe. But, you know, you see, the area where he moved then when he accepted the industry job and the people who lived there, they didn't interact with them. They weren't nasty or anything, but they just ignored them more or less. There was this this invisible wall between them, you know, and there there were these these newcomers who who went there for, you know, getting a job for for working, and then there were the the people who the indigenous people one might say, yeah, there were the people who lived there for generations who speak the dialect, who are owning the land, and they didn't really interact whatsoever. And, uh, yeah, there are different cultures, different lifestyles, different ways to go about these things. For me, this goes too far. Like, like I'm a more an open guy. Like, I, I wouldn't, you know, ignore somebody in my town just because he's from the north of Germany, you know, from the Frisian Islands or something. Um, I wouldn't say, oh, I'm not going to talk to this guy because he's from a different German tribe. Uh, for, for me, that goes a little bit too far. I find that silly. But, you know, if, if you don't want to interact with people from the north, for example, okay, then don't do that. Yeah? It's your choice. Um, I think this ignoring, this, this um, ostracism maybe, or just ignoring people, not interacting, it happened to me too. It happened to me abroad. It happened to me in Germany. It doesn't feel nice. It is a useful tool sometimes. You can treat undesirable e elements like that, but um, treating people who are basically your compatriots like that, um, and not just because you don't like that particular individual, but um, as a matter of principle, uh, to me that goes a little bit too far. Uh, but that's me. I I can see that there are different opinions about that. Some, some tribes, some people, they just prefer to stay among their own, and that's their, that's their right. You know, I have no I have no um, problems with that. Well, if I moved there, I had problems, but I just don't move there then, okay? I, I leave them alone as far as I can. Okay, so that's the second part. Um, he didn't really feel welcome in the community and in the area he moved to. 
um, even though he's German, uh, that that's not the issue. A, a, as I said, different tribe, but also German. Um, that is something. I mean, he, he even bought a house there, so to show how serious he is about uh, um, sp- staying there for long term, because it is also in the job interview, I guess, for that company, it was very important that 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 he. Um, is serious about living in this area. I think maybe that company lost a lot of people to that same reason, that they didn't feel welcome there. Um, Okay, so there you have these parts, right? And um, so to sum up, he was feeling kind of okay about his job. He made really good money. It was about physics. It was what he wanted to do. He didn't like the... I mean, he liked the colleagues, sure, but he didn't like the way he was managed, how the company was run and i would say that would have changed had he gotten more experience there but but at the time he didn't like it and he really had problems with the people living there that they were ignoring him and his family and they felt kind of isolated there and out of place okay and then the question that he asked me was should i go back to my academia job because his old boss was offering him a position as a permanent staff researcher not as a professor but as a staff researcher which is good i mean you don't make as much money as you as he made at the industry position for sure but it is a secure steady job um he would have less stress he could maybe you know be there for his children a little more and um he would be happy with the work he would do i mean he's he's a great researcher he he definitely is cut out for for that he has what it takes to be a great researcher even a professor but you know as a as a white german male it's difficult to become a physics professor these days but that's maybe a topic for another video so his question and you know for some of these questions maybe you need to be 2000 meters above sea level at a lonely mountain pass in the alps to to bring up these topics but he asked me in confidence you know <laughs> should i stay what what do you think rpg he basically said you know should i stay at my industry job or should i move my family back to where we were happy um with less pay and uh, being a staff researcher as at the university yeah so my advice then was that I mean, I, I knew that he probably would feel like a like a failure, you know, that, that, that he didn't make it at his new job and he went back to his old job or something like that. But um, what I told him was that he, well, if he really likes that, if, if, if he thinks that for his family and for him that's the better option, he shouldn't think too much about the, about the income. I mean, it's still good money, you know. It's not like he became a street musician or something it, it's still good money but it's less okay and um if he isn't happy especially if he's ignored by the people there i think that that was my it's probably also his biggest problem but but that is why i gave him the advice to just you know he should ignore this feeling that 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 he couldn't make it in the industry because he could have and we all know he could have um but uh, maybe it's better to go back to the academia position you know that he can do very well and uh, living in an area where he feels more at home or where they make him feel more at home even though it's not his his, uh, the place of his ancestors but but it's an area where he is accepted as a as a um, inner german migrant let's say okay and uh, that's the advice i gave him and um, i don't know if my advice had too much weight on um, his decision he probably asked a lot of people not just me and um, maybe he had made up his mind already anyway and just just wanted to hear people's opinion on it that could also be true so i'm not going to say that my advice was now um, uh, changing his position or was the decisive uh, factor here no no definitely most probably not i don't know but i i really can't imagine that he was basing his decision on my advice but my advice was just do it i mean if if that's what you want to do and we all know you can do it it's a steady job it's it's there is no shame in doing that and if you noticed after one year that that this is not your thing then you know good that you tried that but if it's not your thing it's not your thing that was my advice and that's what he ultimately did then so he went back to academia and um yeah 
two years, uh, about two years later, I get a call from him. Uh, <laughs> I said, yeah, well, um, are you free anytime soon? You know, we haven't had a beer in a long time. Do you want to hang out again? And I was like, oh God, he wants to hang out again. He's married to children. Why is he all of a sudden, you know, why, why does he want to hang out with me all of a sudden, you know? And um, yeah, the truth is, uh, he, of course, he, uh, his wife filed for divorce. Uh, he, he said, I'm a broken man now and I'm trying to build up my life again. And of course, this is when people like me are getting calls again from old uh, uh, pals. And um, yeah, I, I, I scheduled uh, for October with him and um, I will find out. I will find out what uh, the reason actually was. So my fear was then, oh, you know, the, the wife was... Um, was already counting the money and um, then he went back to a to a job with less pay again and and she thought i can do better than this guy i don't know um i hope that this is not what he tells me otherwise i have to really apologize for <laughs> giving this in retrospect bad advice but you know who knows who knows i mean maybe this is not bad advice at all i mean it sucks for the children but he told me that they will they will uh, both share custody and this is very usual in germany so um i'm not gonna say it doesn't exist but all my younger friends at least who have gotten divorced in germany um i, I think in all cases they're sh they, they are sharing custody you know um y yeah there are of course ups and downs with that that the children are are bust around between both households then and yeah sure that's not ideal but it's still better than 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 um not seeing your children at all anymore especially when they're young they probably they will forget how their father looks like or something and then they're, they're bad mouthed by the mother and i'm yeah this is the constellation that normally occurs but see i haven't heard about this at least in my generation they share custody This is also what the woman wants, because when they share custody, the woman is normally free on the weekends to do whatever she wants to do. And yeah, I think we all know what that is. And um, so that's not the problem. He can still see his kids. And um, if that woman wasn't good for him, I don't know her that well, I have to say, but um, better get divorced now than in 20 years, maybe. And um, uh, living with that nag, I don't know. Um, I will find out. So that was part one of the story where my career advice um, was hopefully uh, uh, did not lead to him getting a divorce. But that was my advice. You know, he should go back to his um, academia job if he feels better about that. And ultimately, I think um, people have to have to uh, find out what they're good at and uh, what they're what what personally their character and their skills and their yeah uh, what what they want in life how they want to work how they want to live what that is i mean some people are cut out for being an entrepreneur for example some people are better suited for maybe even public office or or like um an academia job or very steady you know um, lifetime employment but a lot of bureaucracy and red tape Uh, and some people want to be a drone in the industry um, or then you can go to a uh, big corporation, you can go to a small uh, privately owned business. There are so many things. Um, so it's not just about the, the technical skills like can I code, uh, do I have a PhD, can I work this machine or, or that. It, it's, you know, there are, there are more secondary questions and sometimes they are much more important than the hard technical skills. All right, so um, I hope you found that illuminating and interesting. The moral of the story is, I guess he's happy now, but um, maybe it comes with a price and I will find out if that was the case or if this uh, divorce had nothing to do with them moving back there and him choosing the job with the lower pay, but I have a feeling, I have a feeling that it had something to do with that. All right. So take care. Servus, Kameraden.